This video is aimed at helping new and intermediate coaches with a range of serve receive patterns and defensive systems suitable for beginner to more advanced teams. Here we see the younger players showing the basic clockwise rotations that occur each time the team regains the right to serve after a side out. The different coloured jerseys help young players to know who they are opposite in each rotation. Players must be in the correct rotational order when a serve takes place. The arrows indicate the relationship between the different positions. For example, right back must be behind right front and to the right of middle back. Where middle front is positioned has no effect on right back as they are not directly linked by arrows. This lineup has two players overlapping. Can you pick them out? You have 10 seconds. Right back must move backwards to be further away from the net than right front or right front must move forwards ahead of right back in order to correct the overlap. You will see how serve receive patterns can have numerous lineups yet still conform to our basic rotational order. The first and simplest formation we will look at is known as a 6-6 W receive with a middle front setter. 6-6 means all six players will hit and take the role of the setter when in middle front. The right front and left front players drop back to receive the serve and middle back moves up slightly to form a W receive pattern. The younger players now show the six rotations. See how the coach makes positional corrections to help the team. In the W receive it is very common for right or left back to hide directly behind right or left front as we see here. Now we move on to a similar formation but this time the player in right front becomes a setter. This system would not be advisable until players have the ability to set greater distances in order to set the left front player. It does however provide a good transition towards more advanced systems that set from a setting zone between middle front and right front.
A 4-2 formation means that there are four hitters and two designated setters. This will require players to switch positions after the serve takes place. The primary setter is the setter in the back row, so the option of three front row attackers is possible. The setter cannot move to the net before the server has started their serve. The next rotation, the second setter, now in right back, becomes the primary setter and the rotations repeat. A 6-2 formation means that there are six hitters and two setters. The setters are subbed out for a hitter when they rotate to left front. This system is ideal for teams with setters that are weaker blockers than hitters. The next rotation, the second setter subs in to the right back position and now becomes a setter. The front row setter now subs out for a hitter and the rotations repeat. A 5-1 formation means we have five hitters and one setter who sets every rotation.
Notice how once the serve is made, left front and middle front switch to be able to attack through their strongest position. This time, right front moves around the setter to be available to attack through the middle. Now we will go through all six rotations of a 5-1 using three passes. This is a very popular system used by many high school and club teams. It is possible to devise serve receive patterns using just two passes. One advantage of this is the lack of confusion as to who passes the ball. A disadvantage is that the two passes need to be exceptionally skillful. It is possible to try to deceive your opponent into thinking you have a back row setter. Here you see the setter is in right front and left back is looking like the left front attacker. This is a good tactic if your setter is capable of attacking on the second contact as the blockers will be focused on what they think are three hitters. Here we try to hide a weak passer without making the opponent aware of this. Note the potential for an overlap between left front and left back in this example.
We will now look at some defensive systems, but first it is important to establish a base position when the ball is with the opponent. This base defence is often known as wing defence, with left back and right back near the 10 foot line and turned inwards towards the centre of the court. And here we see a man up defence, where middle back is the player near the 10 foot line and responsible for tips. Remember, choose the system that best suits your team. For example, man up helps teams that have difficulty reading tips or off speed attacks. Here, the players use a rotational defence to defend a left side attack. Middle back rotates to cover the line shot. Left front and left back rotate to cover the cross court shot or any ball passing over or through the block formed by right front and middle front. Right back has responsibility for tips. A perimeter defence used here to defend a right side attack has the right front and right back players digging the cross court shot. Middle back has the seam between the two blockers and left back moves to cover the line shot or tips. Right front may also help out with the short tips and it is essential that both players are capable of reading and reacting to the short tip ball. This defence commits middle back to be the close cover, with left back covering line and the cross court shot covered by right front. Right back has the seam between the blockers. If the opponent seldom hits line, then left back can cover the seam of the block and free right back to help out with the cross court shots. Finally, we see a slide defence, where the non-blocking front row player will slide across to cover tips. It is essential for teams to have the ability to use more than one defensive system, to avoid being consistently beaten by the same shot. 